One, back. We're always constantly trying to upgrade and introduce new and exciting props and dressing and art elements to these projects. It's incredibly, incredibly precise process. Every costume has many pieces. Most of the people are just, oh yeah, it's in a unitard. It's so much more than that. <laughs> It was the question of staying true to what it was in the previous movies and yet make it appealing for the audience of 2021. They are different. Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man is way darker. His physique is also different. He's much slimmer and lengthier. Toby's the original Spider-Man. It's a different colors. The web is silver. The muscles have been defined in a different way. Toby's Spider-Man had to completely be redone because because the suit was absolutely falling apart because, you know, it was done in a completely different, you know, 2001 technology. Camera set, ready, and action! We put zippers in a slightly easier position. So yeah, we made it a little bit more comfortable and easier to take off. And it was very funny when they were like talking to each other. Each of them was jealous of the other ones. You've got to be in pretty good shape to walk on the set in front of hundreds of people and look good in that suit. And, you know, I take my hat off to both of them. They both trained really hard to get into great shape to get in those suits. I'm no spring chicken anymore. I'm 37, <laughs> you know? So I worked out a bunch. I love the challenge of it. It was harder as a non-mid-20s person to get into the kind of shape where the spandex isn't going to show everything up. You are amazing. Thank you, yeah, thanks. Will you say it? No, I kind of needed to hear that. Thank you. The mask is the intricate part of the costume, and they have skull caps that are molded to their heads, so they are not wearing it just over their bare head. Those are intricate to make it as tight as possible, not to add to any of the volume of the skull necessarily, but keep the shape and the profile. And then we have a special costume when they are supposed to be without the mask, then it's, as we call it, a turtleneck costume, and then they are in a costume without the hood. All those hoods have a frame for the eyes to literally snap into them, and there are different kinds of eyes. With Dr. Octopus, I wanted to update that costume to look more tailored, more tough, but without changing drastically design. I wanted him to be a little kind of more superheroish in a sort of modern Marvel, Sony sense of the word. So we changed the cut, but we also drastically changed the fabric. We adjusted a little bit of the color. His belt girdle, completely practical. It was made out of quite light material and then painted to look like a medal, and he was always wearing that. Hello, Peter. And then the back with his arms, we simply made the holes on the costume that look like the arms burst out. And in those circles, we just covered it with a blue screen. Because the tentacles aren't actually attached to me, it's given me a bit more freedom physically. But it means that whatever we're doing, I have to be aware of them because they've got to be put in in post. How we handle computer-generated props is that between myself and special effects, we physically make a prop that we feel that the design is locked and we bring it to set and after every shot we shoot, we do a lighting reference with the prop so that the computer graphics people understand where the lights were and how it should react on the set, where the reflections are coming from. You make me sick. Leave me alone. Please. Hiding in the shadows. Green Goblin probably was the biggest departure from the first one, and actually the new design of Green Goblin was done by the visual development department in Marvel. The power suit gets an upgrade, and the mask got discarded. So it's a little closer to the comic, the look of the Goblin. And then the costume, in order to look the way it is, it was a very special technology. It was first 3D printed, and then it was completely poured in foam. As one piece, it's kind of like he just puts the whole thing on, zip it up, it's just one jumpsuit. I know, it sounds so simple, it's very complicated. In the first 
series of Spider-Man movies, they wanted something created by new tech. They wanted it scary and they wanted it hard. But in that suit, it's quite limited what you can do as far as physical gesture. Sometimes I was wearing that mask and could barely see out of it. Now it's much freer. Too weak to take it! The glider that Green Goblin has and pumpkin bombs get reintroduced back into this because we wanted it to be as if time stood still. We were picking up from where we left off. Now, is there technology that we're introducing that wasn't in before? Of course there is. So you might see a weapon come off of Goblin's arm that he uses now in this film that he never had before but it was part of his old technology. What's up, Peter? How you like the new new? We talked about it, and we made a conscious decision not to be blue. He came back as he was, but then he used the arc reactor from the fabricator to enhance his powers and his equipment. And so we had to recreate an entire new costume and equipment that incorporated the arc reactor into his world. And that's where he gets his powers from. We changed him completely. And it was a very interesting way they changed him because he goes from being a pure electricity to something that is a combination of the normal uniform that he actually borrowed from some worker and at a power station. And then he sort of MacGyver the parts on it in a very, very complicated and cool way. This has a little more like realness, like street to it. So I think the conscious decision to come back and have this look really works for the character and you feel it. The whole thing was to make everything just 2021 cooler. After all these Marvel movies, everybody is kind of spoiled visually. So we kind of had to live up to that, make everybody look cool and be able to move. So if I achieve that, then I'm happy.